right, basically said, you know, we've given up on menus and toolbars. No one can find any of the features we put in them. They're too bloated. We tried hiding some stuff. That didn't work. So now let's just add another place to look for commands. And that was the task pane. Now notice we don't stop adding new toolbars because we're up to 30 toolbars. And we added eight task panes in this first version. And we continue to add a bunch of other UI components. Um, but the task pane was a new place to start adding features. And by the time we get to the final exhibit in Ye Old Museum, Office 2003, we added an existing 11 task panes, bringing us to 19 task panes, in addition to 31 toolbars, and the Intelli menus, and all the rest of it. So this is how you get from Word 1.0 to Word 2003. And although it looks great on the box when the picture looks like this, in real usage, this is often what Office 2003 ends up looking like on people's computers, because they don't manage the UI. People don't want to spend time closing stuff. And so toolbars pop up, help pops up, other panes pop up, stuff ends up everywhere. And you end up with this little postage stamp size place to work in the middle of your document. So reviewing. The first version of Word had less than 50 menu items. And by the time we got to Word 2003, you can see we're over 250 discrete menu items. And then you look at the number of toolbars and task panes. Well, that yellow line represents the number of toolbars. And remember, every toolbar is not just one command. It's a whole row of 16 by 16 unlabeled icons. So we're up to 33 of those. And then look at task panes. Man, it didn't take long for those to start, to start making their way up, too. So when we started Office 2007, our team looked at this chart. And we're like, where's that blue line going to be? We're going to be at 45 or 50 task panes by Office 2007. And when is this going to end? It was, it, was, it was kind of madness. So it wasn't that menus and toolbars weren't a good, uh, a good paradigm. They're actually an amazing paradigm. And it's amazing that things that were invented back in Xerox Park in the 1970s lasted us all the way to, to now. But they were designed for, for less full-featured programs. Um, the feature set of Office has just stretched the, the limits of what those paradigms were designed to handle. And so as a result, it really is harder to find features than it was a decade ago. It really is harder. Again, remember, menus were designed to support functionality like this. The first spec for sort of menus that came out, out of Xerox again, said that menus should have no more than seven things on it. Well, when you have a program with so much functionality like Office, you can see why my menus are not the ideal paradigm. If this is what your program looks like, where do you put the next control? Right? Where does the next gauge go? On the seat? Does it go you know, on the window? At some point, you're out of room. And so we needed to, to create a new user interface. And we also thought that this was an opportunity to do what we called reawakening the soul of the software. It was an opportunity to redefine what Word meant, and what Excel meant, and what PowerPoint meant. Um, it, was a new, it was a chance to rethink the applications, knowing with, the, with, with hindsight how they turned out. What features had we added over time? And so with that, I'm going to do a quick, literally two-minute demo of Office 2007 um, to show you a couple of concepts, and just in case um, anyone in here hasn't seen it before. So this is a Word document here. This is a new user interface. And I just have some text that I dumped into here. Um, I'm going to make a brochure about Australia. And so the first thing to note is the ribbon, which is the, the area at the top, which is the tabbed set of commands. And the Home tab is designed to be very familiar to people who've used the standard and formatting toolbars in Office before. So it's pretty simple to you know, grab some text, click Center, um, and, and it works very similar to the standard toolbar. We also have something throughout the UI which is called Live Preview, which says that any time you hover over a, a formatting choice, will show you exactly what it looks like. So you don't have to do a lot of trial and error, a lot of click undo, click undo, click undo. Um, in this case, because this is a title for my brochure, I'd probably rather use a style. And in this case, I'll use the title style. Again, see that so these things live preview as well. Let me call that uh, title. And now I'm going to insert a picture. So I click Insert, Picture, which used this cute koala. Um, and as you can see, this picture inserted itself like pictures always do in Word and how you hardly ever want them to, which is with the text, you know, sort of displacing the text and with the text starting down here. So what I'm going to do is use the position gallery, 
which again just shows you the most common places that people want to put pictures in, in uh, their documents and uh, shows you with live preview where it's going to end up. So as I click this one, you'll see that Word scrolls and into view to show me the picture. And I want to give this a cool effect. So these visual things that I've popped down are called galleries. And galleries are the way of showing the results of the feature as opposed to the commands themselves. And they're designed to be very visual. So you can see as I hover over different effects here, I can make it look like a, a picture, or I can tilt it, or I can give it a reflection um, until I find one that looks like what I want to. In this case, I'm going to give it this very simple uh, white frame here. And now I want to format this more like a brochure. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is change the orientation of the page to landscape. Again, using a gallery, just choose orientation landscape. I'm going to use my live zoom at the bottom to zoom this out to the point where I can see the whole page so that I can sort of get a sense of it a little bit better. I'll split the text into columns. I'll just choose columns uh, two. That seems good. Word takes care of the rest. Um, one of the uh, cool things that we've done is even things like margins that used to take going into a dialog box. You can now set the most common margins or the ones that you've used recently, again, just using a very visual, uh, visual thing. Another way that we wanted to make it possible to work is to get the entire UI back for your document. And because all of, the, all of the commands from Office are put into the ribbon, like there's no additional toolbars and other junk, it's also very easy to get rid of it. So I can right click and choose minimize the ribbon. And now the entire UI has turned into just one little strip at the top. You can continue to access the ribbon in sort of a pop-up mode, but then it goes out of your way to give you a little more space to see your document. And when you're working in this uh, way, one of the cool things that you can do is called the mini toolbar. So I'm going to select some text, and if you look just above the cursor, you'll see a little faded in toolbar that has the most common formatting commands um, right above it. As I move my mouse to it, you'll see that it fades in. If I move my mouse anywhere other than towards it, you'll see that it's very shy. It just totally goes away. But if I move towards it, I can see the most commonly used formatting commands. So if I want to shrink this down a little bit to make it fit, I can just do that and not even need to use the ribbon at all. So I'm going to bring the ribbon back. And now let's just finish this up. So let's put in sort of a, a cool header using sort of our gallery of headers here. Um, that's cool. It knew the title of my document um, today. Um, I can add page numbers very easily, just page numbers, bottom of the page, find a style that looks good. I don't know what I'm in the mood for. Oh, this is kind of cool. So I get a sort of bracketed number at the bottom. And the final thing I'll do here is just add a quick cover page. This looks sort of cool. Although this train doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for Australia. So I think what I'll do is just choose change picture and choose a nice little picture there, and I'm done. So that sort of gives you a quick overview of how I took some just plain text and turned it into something really cool in just a few seconds, all visually. I didn't use really commands. I just used sort of galleries and live preview to make this thing look cool. So that's the Office uh, user interface. And there's a lot more that I didn't show you. It's really not just the ribbon. I called this the story of the ribbon, but it's more than that. Because there's a whole lot of things that work together to make the user interface work. But really, the key concept behind it is this thing called results-oriented design, which is mean as opposed to thinking about commands like execute this command, execute this command, execute this command, we try to think about functionality that we could put together discreetly and present at a higher level, and then figure out how to display it visually. So instead of showing a bunch of commands, show the picture of what it's going to look like and make it sort of fun to play with it. Um, and so people would try different things out, and that would help them learn about the product. So this is the design process that we used. And there are sort of four steps to it. Research, the formulation of design tenets, prototypes, and evaluation. The first one I'm going to talk about is the research that went into it. So whenever I talk about interface design to people at Microsoft, I always talk about it being one part art and one part science. There's no book that you can read that can teach you exactly how to do it, because part of it is art. And you need to understand the art part and the science part. Art is all about language for me. User interface is really the language that software uses to communicate to you what is, what's possible. It's the sort of medium between the, the computer and the human. Now, people have an amazingly emotional experience um, with a relationship with their computer. I mean, anyone who's ever like slammed a mouse down 
or you know, slam their keyboard down, or occasionally you see pictures of people who threw their monitor on the ground. That's emotional. And there's actually some research that was done a couple years ago that showed that office users spend more time one-on-one -on 